Hello and welcome to this week's assembly. We've really enjoyed looking through all of the dinosaur artwork that you have sent to us over the past week. We've really enjoyed looking through it and I know that colleagues from the Natural History Museum have enjoyed looking through it as well. This week we're joined by Libby Jackson from the UK Space Agency. Libby was part of the team that was responsible for getting Tim Peake, the most recent UK astronaut, up into space. She's going to be sharing all of her intergalactic knowledge with us. But before Libby, I'm really excited to introduce Anton Deck. Lots of you will know Anton Deck from the telly, but they're here today from the NSPCC to talk to us about staying safe and speaking out. Good morning, Oak National Academy. Thanks to all the students who've joined us. Ant and Deck here. We want to encourage every single one of you to speak out if you're feeling upset, anxious or worried. This might mean finding an adult that you can trust, like a parent, relative or teacher, and talking to them about how you're feeling. Or you can contact Childline to speak to someone in confidence. Childline's trained counsellors can speak to you over the phone or through online chat and will listen to any worries you might have, big or small. You can get in touch at childline.org.uk slash kids or you can call a counsellor on 0800-1111. All children have the right to speak out and be heard. Be safe and get help when they need it. The UK Space Agency is responsible for all our country's exploration of the worlds beyond our own. Be it experiments in space, building technology to explore Mars, or the countless other ways that we seek to make progress in understanding ourselves and where we live. Today, we invited some pupils to find out more about that work by quizzing the UK Space Agency's Libby Jackson. Who am I here with everybody here? Those lovely faces. Joe. Angus. Mad. Um, my name's Lauren. Hey, Lauren. This is confusing. Everyone's names aren't the same there. So we've got Lauren and Joe and Angus. And there was one more voice I heard, I thought. Yeah, so this this one. Ah! Are you going to be an astronaut when you're older, Joe? Mm. Yeah. He likes space. <laughs> Let me tell you who I am. I'm Libby. Uh, I work at the UK Space Agency and I look after human spaceflight for the UK. So I'm, I'm in charge of human spaceflight and astronauts and all the amazing science that happens up there um, in the UK. So I have to make sure that we here in the UK get the best we can out of it. I used to work in mission control. Uh, I spent seven years there, so I have uh, worked with astronauts for a long, long time. And I hear that, I think out in Oak, um, you've been learning about space from time to time, a minute, and um, got some questions. I can answer, I'd love to hear what your questions are and answer those. When you were in mission control, did you ever feel nervous that something might go wrong? I didn't, and you know why I didn't? It's because we were really well trained um, to make sure that we knew what to do if something went wrong. Um, so it's, it's just like the astronauts. We would spend lots and lots of time practicing. We would have what was called a simulation. So we'd sit in the control room um, with uh, people pretending to be astronauts and we'd have our computers that were, were how we control the spacecraft. Um, and there were computers basically in another room pretending to be in space. Um, and they were, things would break and there would be fires that would break out and um, you know, payloads for experiments would go wrong. It's just like playing a computer game, really, but it felt really real. And we'd have to make sure that you know, we, we practiced and we learned and we, we, made, we learned how to, to deal with it. So when we had the real thing come along, we, we knew that we had the skills and the knowledge to know what to do. What's your favourite planet, planet and why? Which is my favourite planet and why? I like Earth, really, because, because I can live on it and I can breathe. Um, so Earth has got to be my favourite planet. Um, but I think the one after that, I like Saturn because it's beautiful. All the rings are amazing. Um, 
And we've learned so much about those rings. Once upon a time, we thought they were sort of solid, and then we discovered they were lots and lots of little bits of rock. Um, and they're swirling round, and, and you can almost see in, in Saturn how all the planets form, because, because all those different bits of rock that are swirling around Saturn and make up those beautiful rings. Um, it's a bit like how once upon a time there was this big swirling disk of rocks around the sun, and it all formed together and made the planets, and, and that's, you know, it made us eventually. Um, and so Saturn's, I say, Saturn's really beautiful, but I think it's really interesting too when you look at the rings. And you can, if you have a telescope, you get to see it in the sky. And I haven't managed to do that yet, but I'd like to wonder. How close can you get to the sun without burning? How close can you get to the sun without burning? Well, it sort of depends on, on basically how much protection you've got. There's Mercury and Venus, which are the two planets closer into the sun. And there's no way humans could survive on them because they're so hot. Um, uh, I can't remember the temperatures, but, but you know, really things can melt. And, and Venus has got this atmosphere that's really sort of full of yucky gases that are really hot. And to send spacecraft to those um, places, they have to be protected against the heat. Uh, we've got a spacecraft um, called Solar Orbiter um, that the UK helped build as part of the European Space Agency project. And that's on its way to the sun now, and that's got big sunshades on it um, because it's going to study the sun, but it can't get too hot, so it has to sort of be behind this, it's basically a big sunshade with parasol to keep it cool. Um, so it's, it's, it's really hard, even if you're a spacecraft, to get you know quite close to the sun. And like the solar orbiter isn't getting right to the surface of the sun; it's still you know quite a long way out to make sure that it can um, see the sun. But the sun's really, really, really hot. Do you know? Um, do you know what else is out there? For example, aliens. Do you think they exist? Do I think aliens exist? I absolutely think aliens exist somewhere out in the solar system. If you look and you've got a you know, really good telescope, like the Hubble telescope, you can see galaxies all over the sky, and every galaxy is full of billions of stars, and there are planets around all of those stars. So there are so many places out there that I think life definitely had to evolve somewhere else out there. I think I don't think they'd look like they do in the cartoons. I think they'd look different but not crazy. I think they'd actually look a bit like us but they won't be able to communicate with us. Maybe they'll look like us because hum um, because life here on earth is pretty amazing and it evolves in lots of different ways. I, I think they will be adapted whatever place they are living in very well that's what that's what we've all learned how to do we all learn how to adapt um when when you were little did you ever think that you'd be able to um work in mission control i didn't i really didn't i was when i was little i really enjoyed learning about space um and i thought that mission control might be an exciting place to work um but i didn't actually think it was possible and I never knew what was going to happen, but I never forgot that it was something that I would like to do and um, did my best to try and make it happen. And it, I was very lucky it did. Thanks so much for asking those. Um, you've got one last chance to ask some questions uh, for astronauts. Uh, in a couple of weeks' time, uh, there's uh, the last UK Space Agency Tim Talk Space um, event. So if you've got a chance, you, you can always go on that and you get, actually get a question to ask Tim Peake. Um, some questions you can catch all the rest of them online too um, but as always you've got more questions there are so many places out there you can go and find answers go go and have a look at those and um, thanks so much for, for listening today I hope you've enjoyed this bit of the assembly I'm going to hand over now uh, back to one of the other Oak Academy teachers um, who I think are going to pass you on to the kids section thanks again and bye thank you thank you Hi, I'm Dr Fishwick and I'm one of the science teachers here at Oak National Academy. Thank you very much to Libby for coming on to speak to us about space and, and your role. I really enjoy hearing about space and everything going on with human spaceflight, particularly all the different government agencies around the world aiming to get men and women to the moon and hopefully to Mars in the next decade or so. But back to what we've been looking at in our lessons, it's really great to see 
everything that you share with us. We love to see that you love learning and all that content that you share with us, both on Twitter, Instagram, from all over the country and in every subject. We're going to have a look at just a handful of these pieces of work that have been shared with us this week. If you want to have your work shown in assembly, then make sure you get your parent or carer to share your work with us on social media and tag it with hashtag LearnWithOak. There's a girl called Cleo. I want to go to space, she said. Two, one, zero. One day passed, two days passed, three days passed, four days passed. Beep, beep, beep. She brought a flag with her. But then she saw something coming. Idiot attention. Idiot attention. Big thanks to our guests today. As we head now into the last few weeks of term, it is even more important that you keep working really hard making sure you're completing the lessons that your teachers are setting for you, making sure that you're listening to parents. Have a great week. Keep working hard.